All right, you guys, welcome back to Living Fit with Gabby and Chris. So today is going to be a little bit of an update and then later in the video, uh, we are going to be hitting back workout. Uh, Christian's gonna go ahead and explain that for you guys. I'll be doing the movements. Um, if you guys wanna skip straight to that, we'll put the timestamp down below so that you guys can go straight to the workout if you don't wanna hear the update about my prep and why I'm not competing in the spring. So let's get right into it. All right, you guys, so as many of you know, I was supposed to be competing in spring. About three months ago, I picked a coach that I thought was fitting for me that um, I felt like he knew what he was doing. He was a well-known like known coach. A lot of people trusted him. Um, I think he does know what he's doing, but I might have rushed into the prep process. Um, so basically, the first month went really well. I dropped about 5% of body fat. Um, I wanted to originally compete in spring, and then I talked to him, and he was like, no, it's looking like May or June, which I was fine with. I was like, okay, you know, I want to go on stage and bring a good package, not like a half ass type of, you know, uh, package onto the stage. And then um, he started increasing my cardio by a lot and dropping my food by a lot. So I was only three months into prep, and I was at 1,400 calories and doing 40 minutes of cardio every single day, which is like a lot. It's like not good to be on that low of food doing that much cardio and then still have another six months of prep to go. Because it's like you're only going to go less food and more cardio. So um, Christian was very honest with me. <laughs> and told me, uh, he was like, you know, I don't know if you want to go into like to compete with the way you're looking. Um, and a few, <laughs> a few other people told me like, you're looking really skinny. Like, I don't know. Um, and of course, like that's kind of disappointing to hear because you're working so hard towards a goal. But at the same time, you have to take it as criticism and kind of like put a block up against your emotions. So basically I talked to um, Christian and an IFBB pro that uh, just got her pro card and has gone through, you know, all of the whole process of competing. And she, they both told me, listen, you need to take an off season before you even think about competing. Um, and so she basically recommended and Christian recommended that I do an off season to put on some more muscle because right now um, to compete, I need to have more capped off shoulders. So I need to grow my shoulders a little bit more um, and fill out my glutes and hamstring tie in more. So that is my goal right now. I'm going to be in like an off season slash growing season for uh like four months and then we'll start cutting and hopefully uh, earliest I can compete will be in late July. So that is the update with prepping, competing. Um, I'm still going to compete, it's just pushed back a little bit and I'm stopping prep now and I'm going into what's known as like a bulk season or an off season to put on more muscle so that I have a package to bring on stage that is competitive. It's competitive. Because when you're on prep, it's, it's you're going to lose some muscle if you're really going to like get down to that percentage. Of body fat. Of body fat. So you need the muscle to burn. Not much, but I mean, if you're not having, uh, don't have a lot to begin with, that type of diet is more like the month going into the show. In my opinion, some people do it other differently, but that's what I told her was you're just not ready to do that type of work and go into a show so early. And she listened. So. And for so long. And for so long. Yeah. So I would have been in prep for nine months if I was still. And again, and again, like you look at these competitors. I mean, they're getting younger and younger, but <clears throat> you see them 40 years old, 35 years old. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a game of time. You can't jump into it. Like I see everybody jumping into competitions. And that's just, I don't think that's the way to do it. Um, so another thing too is we've been getting a lot of questions on like what is prep? Prep is basically you're preparing for a bodybuilding competition. Prep is a reason to post on Instagram. Yeah. That's what prep is. <laughs> um, it's just dieting and lifting. But like on a more serious, it's different than just losing weight in my opinion and what I've experienced thus far. Yeah, it is It's completely different. different. Um, and so you know, listening to Christian and what he told me about taking an off season, it was a hard decision because 
I feel like I'm back at the beginning of like learning everything again. Um, I know what to do as far as just like losing weight. Like that's all I've done for almost two years now. So the thought of like doing an off season or a bulk season and putting on weight is a little bit scary to me, but I know that it'll be worth it in the end when I'm cutting and getting ready for a show. That being said, let's get to the back workout. Yeah, gains. Okay, so we're gonna start off with pull-ups, guys. So what she's doing is she's basically, when you pull your lat, it inserts all the way down into the lower lumbar spine, okay? So you're trying to extend all the way and keep your biceps out of it, so come up. So she's pulling her elbows back this way, okay? Her chest is up and she's stretching. So what she's doing is she's, so do that, that uh, retraction, see that? Go back down. So see what she's doing first is she's retracting her rhomboids down and back. Then she's pulling with her lat. So what that does is it takes, it pulls um, you into using your lat, which is, and it starts up into your uh, humerus all the way down here. Okay, that's what you want to want to hit. Good. So the resistance band is just there to help her a little bit. Go ahead. That's basically how you do a pull up for our purposes. So the positioning too is a factor. You want to come in wider, you're going to come in a little right in here, okay? Outer, lateral. Come in more skinny. Good, now you're going to hit the medial part of your back. Okay, so more inner. And that just depends on what you want to hit. So whatever you guys want to do. Usually it's better just naturally put your hands up and that's your range of motion, but then you can play with it in a different hand position. And then what that does is it produces or makes a taper coming into that V, that V shape yeah, that you were asking for. sketchy but we got an <laughs> elevated bench um, so you can see so we're gonna be able to extend farther so come up so I really like this one because it explains a lot of concepts and if that you get you can actually work your back in different areas and you can really feel it so I'm gonna push down on her back and what that does is it's gonna take the lumbar out of it so it's gonna feel it more in the lap so okay. your lower back so your lower back and this is one of the reasons people use belts um, it's not, I mean, it is to protect the waist, but it's also to take the lumbar out. Okay, so go ahead, come up. So what she's doing is, I'm going to be pressing down, and now the lat's engaged. Okay, so there's no erector spinae, anything, longitudinal muscles working, except the lat, and I can feel it work right here. And she's pulling up hard, she's retracting her shoulder blades. So what she's doing, she's pulling her shoulder blades back, and then she's pulling all the way from her waist up to her yeah. So I can feel it all the way down here is what you want. Okay. Her neck's neutral, so she can come up with it, but she's not raising her neck up. Good. Go one more time. Squeeze, back down slow. Good. So if you guys can learn how to take your lumbar spine, which your lumbar just means your lower back, because a lot of people pull, um, kind of bring momentum with their lower back, like on lat pull downs and stuff. So if you were to do a lat pull down and I was to push you forward, that's taking the lumbar out of it and any momentum that you have through, into the movement. So things like that is, is if you get the concept of taking the lumbar out and just contracting the lat, you guys are going to get a lot uh, better results. It also helps with the stretch on the way down. Because yeah. your hands aren't hitting the floor cause since this is elevated. So you guys have a, a little bit more of range to stretch and then... Yeah, you couldn't do this on like a regular bench. But, so for example, uh, if you do a cable, a cable row, um, you're in this position. So your, your back's already contracting. But if you were to put something on your chest at that angle, now you can take your, your back out of it and use more of your lap. So, so you're you getting support. This, like, and that's one of the, yeah. So say bodybuilders <coughs> use, there's three things, right? There's it's isometric, concentric, and eccentric, which build a program. Um, and those are the different type of movements that you have. 
bodybuilders, they use machines as their stability. Um, other people use their core or whatever as their stability. But as far as growing your physique, you try to take everything out except the muscle that you're working, which is we even taking out the back, the lower back now instead of, so they're not using the whole back. Just so it's just legs. something to kind of think about as you're doing it. T-bar row this is one of my favorite back workouts. Go ahead, come up. So right now, I feel it in her biceps. Why? It's because she's too high. You go down, 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 down. More. So now, it's less off her bicep and more on her back. The reason for that is the angle, right? So your muscles, your back muscles pull this, this way, right? If she's up, don't, don't lift it, just come up. If she's up this high, these aren't contracted because these pull this way. I mean, if gravity's pulling this way, that means your the vector's force is going down this way and that's not the back, that's the bicep, okay? Because she's pulling it, she's pushing it up. So that's why you want it flat, and then now grab it, and right there, okay? So push down. So now another thing is too, if I was to do this and push straight down, I'm gonna activate my lat. If I was to push this way in, I'm gonna activate my chest. If I push out, I activate this, okay? So when you do it, you're gonna grab the bar and you're gonna pull down. You're gonna try to pull to your belly button. And that's really gonna activate the lat, okay? If your elbows are up, that means you're activating the rear delt because now you're pulling this way. If you're pushing in, you're gonna activate the chest. You gotta push down, okay? So when she does it, she's again, like on the, on the pull up, she's pushing down and now she's coming up. Boom. Here, go. Squeeze back down. Squeeze back down. Good. Squeeze back down. Relax this. Pull. Yeah, there we go. Bam. Pull. Pull down. Two. Good. Now drop it. Now watch this. She's going to move it down just a little bit. Good. Well, don't move. Okay, move here and keep it here. Go. Now go to your belly button. Good. That should feel a lot more. Good. Two. One. Drop it. Okay, so that's a different variation. Again, the main point here is when you're in your close grip or any grip, you're gonna push down to activate the lat. Okay, if you do it yourself, you just do this, and push down, you're gonna feel in your back. That's the most important part. A lot of people pull up, and when they pull up and they shrug up, if you're doing, if you're gaining strength from your trap, you're gonna push this up and this doesn't activate. And that's, that's the movement, that's what the back does. So push down. Yeah, so push down. This is exactly what I was talking about before. You guys are literally gonna pull down. It's gonna activate your lat. But now to pull out, what she's gonna do is she's gonna move them out. So you're activate and pull out and twist your hands in. Okay, that's gonna activate the lat. So go ahead, do it. So a lot of people start in and that only works part of the upper part of the movement. We're gonna extend all the way out and she's gonna have a flat back. Okay, so she's push out, go ahead, go. And go all the way out, yeah, all the way out. Come up, and don't come up on the movement. A lot of people come up. I'm gonna lighten the weight on this, you guys, because I really wanna have like proper form. And sometimes your form, well, all the time, your form is more important than the weight you're lifting. So right now, you can see I'm only doing 11 pounds. So this is, if you're doing it right, this should be a hard exercise for you guys. Okay, I wanna show them something right here. Go ahead, do it. Okay, so see where her leverage is? Her leverage ends on her back about right here. Anything other than that goes into the shoulders. Okay? And tricep. And tricep, so to go down. Now she's pulling the leverage is this way, and her leverage actually starts here, and this is all activating the lat. 
Okay, so that's the difference. That's why I say start back, one and forward. Yeah, you feel it like all the way through back okay. here. So you're gonna stretch and go back, go down, all the way down. And watch your shoulder on this one, guys, because you guys can a lot pronate it, or your shoulder comes in because you're getting strength from your shoulder. If like you that. find that, I mean, lower the weight. Also, pull down. When you pull down, you pull out. And the reason for that is it's gonna activate your lat more. Okay, so I told you, as you pull out this way, you're gonna activate your rear delt and your terrace minor. So guys, if you go too low, you can actually get into your rear delt. And we don't necessarily want that. good for your posterior chain and um, for your posture so a lot of people do uh, trap raises and uh, um, there's a movement going around that's not how you work your traps so it makes them big but it's causes a lot of shoulder problems and it's due to that type of movement this is the right way to work your trap okay so go ahead so what she's doing she's going back down it's just like a lap pull down she's gonna pull her elbows all the way back and she's gonna lift them up all the way up all the way up okay, good and back down up Squeeze, come up, bring them up. So bring them up to the sky higher. There we go, go. So what this does is it actually pivots the shoulder outside of the uh, clavicle. So you have complete range to go up and down to. And it's also gonna work your trap, okay? This is how you work your trap. This is the true motion of the trap, not up and down like you see most of the time. That one burns. It does, I think yeah. this one burns the most out of all of them right now. Because yeah. you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position. Uh, not for your shoulder, but for your muscle to work. And that's how you work the trap. And these are only two and a half pounds. Yeah, so <laughs> you see next somebody doing this, tell them to do this instead. Okay, it's way better. You can do this actually with a bar too. Kind of locks your elbows in place more to fill it in the upper trap. Um, but this one's a good one for you. this little update about prep and where I stand with that and I hope you guys enjoyed this back workout I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a back workout so this was the perfect beginner back workout or back workout for any levels just depending on the weight that you do um, it really teaches you guys uh, the movements and how to engage your lats since we got a lot of questions about that yeah if you guys do it right three sets of 15 for those five exercises should give you a good workout so we hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.